At the same time, Hongwu managed to survive in the fear trial. He reached floor 72 and scored 82,000 points. A return portal opened, and Hongwu entered inside and arrived at the surveillance room. While Director Bai and the others stood there, Lu Fan started to move away from them and wave goodbye. While Hongwu was exiting the portal, he began to wipe his chin using his hand. He was all injured and had torn clothes because he had been fighting against the bosses on the floors. He had been close to dying. Once he reached the surveillance room, with a proud look, he tightly clenched his fist and then gritted his teeth. He had cleared 72 floors and was confident that he would secure first place. He knew that the top 10 academic institutions were fiercely competing against each other to attract the best trial students. It was said that they offered generous rewards. He had faith that with these rewards, he would be able to level up faster in the future. He turned his body to one side, placed a hand on his waist and upon seeing Director Bai and the others all gathered there, he couldn't help but wonder why there was so much commotion here and why there were so many directors. He put his hand under his chin, closed his eyes, and with a smile began to imagine the director of the first middle school. In his imagination, the director was going to put his hand on his shoulder, close his eyes, and congratulate him for getting such a high score and being number one. In response, he was going to close his eyes and with a smile tell him that the trial hadn't been so difficult. He was confident that he would come in first place, he thought it was time to show everyone what he was capable of. He decided to stop thinking about the subject, closed his eyes, approached the director of first middle school, and with a smile caught his attention. Upon hearing Hong Wu's voice, the director turned his head back and began to look at him with a disappointing gaze. He asked if he had completed the trial. With a proud look, Hong Wu stared at the director and explained that he had already finished the trial. He decided to show off a bit about the score he had achieved. He revealed to the director that he had obtained a score of 89,000 points. After saying this, he started laughing and explained to him that he wasn't sure if he would receive the title of best student. The director approached him, placed his hand on his shoulder, closed his eyes, and with a calm voice, he asked him not to worry since he had done very well in the trial. He also added that with this score, he could easily get into the top 10 universities in the country. Upon hearing this, Hongwu started looking at the director and couldn't help but start sweating and feeling somewhat confused. The director also added that the results of his trial were fine, but not great, and in order to not discourage him, he also mentioned that while the results were important, one should act according to their abilities. Upon seeing that Hongwu's injuries were not serious, he asked him to seek treatment quickly. With a confused look, Hongwu began to stare at the director and many questions came to his mind. He didn't know what the director meant by your trial results are fine, but not great. He didn't take long to come to the conclusion that this was not right. He knew that if the director did not value a score as high as his, it was because someone else had an even higher score. He thought that surely the director wanted him not to be proud, and he came to the conclusion that this was a reminder for him to be more mature. He approached the director, began to look into his eyes, clenched his fist, showed it to him and with a smile he explained that now he understood everything. He thanked the director for his hard dedication. Upon hearing this, the director was somewhat confused as he did not know what Hong Wu was talking about. Seven days passed and it was the day when the ranking list of the grand exam was going to be revealed. Lu Sheng returned to his aunt's bun shop, and at that moment, someone knocked on the door. When they opened the door, Lu Sheng and his aunt Han Qi were both confused and surprised. In front of his aunt's bun shop, there were a lot of people who wanted to talk to him. They all started running towards him, each carrying a gift for him. One of them asked him to please accept the small gift. He wanted to invite Lu Fan to his mansion for a meeting. Another person asked Lu Fan which universities he was considering studying at the moment. Everyone started pushing each other as they wanted to talk to him. Seeing this, Lu Fan was shocked. Han Qi grabbed his shirt with her hand, put the other hand near her mouth and couldn't help but be scared. Among all these people, Shanghai was also here. He approached them, closed his eyes, and with a pleasant smile explained to them that today was the big day when the list of the grand exam would be revealed. He also added that all these people who had come knew that Lu Fan was number one in the southern province. Han Qi started looking at Shanghai. She thought there was a lot of commotion outside, so she asked him to come inside to talk. Several minutes later, Shanghai entered Han Qi's bun shop. Lu Fan took out his mobile phone to check the results table of the grand exam of the south province in the Dragon Realm. As expected, Lu Fan came in first place with a score so high that it was confidential. In second place was Chen Tianjai from Qingzhou City with a total score of 215,000 points. Shanghai explained that Zhanghai City wanted to award Lu Fan six prize boxes equivalent to 50 million. 
he asked Liu Fan to accept them quickly. Upon seeing that his score had not been published, Liu Fan became somewhat confused and intrigued to know why this had happened. While Liu Fan was distracted looking at his phone, Shanghai handed a suitcase to Han Qi, who quickly took it with both hands. He approached her, began to look towards the suitcase and slowly started to open it, causing a bright golden light to emerge from inside. With a smile, he explained to Liu Fan that in addition, Director Bai also wanted to give him some rewards. Upon hearing this, Liu Fan slightly turned his head back and couldn't help but be amazed. This suitcase contained several items. The first item was a book called The Roar of the Blue Dragon King. It was a rare quality object and considered a skill book. The only professions that could use this item were dragon tamers and dragon language mages. The requirement to use it was to be level 20. After using it, one could learn the magical skill called Roar of the Blue Dragon King. This skill allowed the user or pet to release a powerful electric discharge forward, causing great damage and paralysis effect. Subsequent attacks would add 29 points of electrical attributes, decreasing with each attack. This ability had a 20% chance of paralyzing the target. The second item was a legendary quality thunder potion. This item was considered a consumable. After consuming it, it permanently increased power and resistance to electrical attributes by 20% for lightning skills. Liu Fan couldn't help but be surprised. He thought that with the Thunder Potion's ability, the power of the book could be even stronger. Besides ice magic, they now also had electric magic. He couldn't help but feel happy since they wouldn't have to rely solely on Xiaoyi's magical damage anymore. The third item was an armor called Blue Wind of Rare Quality. The requirement to use this item was to be level 20. It had a skill called Green Wind which reduced the damage received by the wearer by 30% due to its reduction effect. This item also granted 70 strength points and 46 stamina points to the user. Shanghai took out the items and while holding them in his hands, he turned his head towards Lu Fan and with a smile explained that these items had been carefully selected by Director Bai, especially the Shining Feather Boots that were charged in 30 seconds and allowed the user to teleport. This item was called Shining Feather Boots and it was of legendary quality. The requirement to use this item was to be level 20. It had an ability called Jump, which allowed the user to instantly teleport to any position within a radius of 50 meters. The cooldown time was 30 seconds. This item granted the user 68 points of strength and 54 points of stamina. Now he had two items, one for movement and another for damage reduction. Now the students who had just passed the grand exam couldn't find equipment like this, as everyone had changed their gear, and their attributes were similar to Xiaoya's when she first hatched from her egg. Without hesitation, Lu Fan grabbed the suitcase and with a smile told Shanghai that these were the abilities that only second-level mages had. He decided not to hold back. At that moment a system window appeared to inform him that he had acquired a new ability called Dragon King's Roar. The system automatically equipped the boots and armor for him. Now he also had the Thunder Potion stored in his inventory. Several minutes later, Kin Q, who was holding the magic staff, made her way through the crowd and entered Han Ki's bun shop. She went inside and with a pleasant smile, greeted Lu Fan and his aunt. She explained that the representatives of the top 10 educational institutions had already arrived in Zhanghai City. Her father had invited them to their house and she would be responsible for picking up Lu Fan and taking him with her for the interview. Shanghai simply turned his head towards her and started smiling. Upon seeing that Kin Q had also come, Han Ki thought that everyone was really excited today. Lu Fan turned his head towards Kin Q and with a surprised look asked her how they had arrived so early if they had just released the results of the grand exam. Shanghai turned his head towards him, started looking at him and with a smile asked him not to be late. He explained that after watching Lu Fan's video of the grand exam, the top 10 educational institutions came instantly. After saying this, he turned his head back and with a serious look revealed to Lu Fan that his video of the grand exam and his grades had been arranged by the master to keep them secret. Only the top 10 institutes and high-ranking officials from Longdu had access to them. No one else had seen anything. Lu Fan was too special and it would be very problematic if a second princess appeared. He also added that the matter of Jinju had already been resolved by the master and that he wanted to see him in person. Lu Fan simply turned his head towards him, started looking at him, and remained silently listening without interrupting. With a pleasant smile, he told Shanghai that he would also like to meet the master to personally thank him. Upon hearing this, Shanghai approached him, placed his hand on his shoulder, closed his eyes and with a smile explained that now was not the time since he had an ongoing task. 
he asked Lu Fan not to worry as they were destined to meet sooner or later. Kin Q approached Lu Fan. While holding the magical staff in one hand, she took out a card with the other and started looking at him. As she began to blush, she asked him to please accept it, explaining that originally, the last time she had come to visit him was to thank him. Unfortunately, she ran into Jinju. Upon seeing that this card was a Bahinia card, Lu Fan became somewhat confused and thought that something wasn't right. He reminded her that they had agreed on 100,000, but this card contained 10 million dragon coins. Shanghai approached Lu Fan from behind, placed his hand on his shoulder, turned his head towards him, and with a grateful look, asked him to please accept the card as he had saved Kin Q's team in the grieving village. He added that this was a sincere gesture from the Kin family. Upon hearing this, Lu Fan slightly turned his head towards him, began to look into his eyes, and couldn't help but become even more confused. While Shanhai had his hand resting on Lu Fan's shoulder, he closed his eyes and with a smile explained to him that at night when Kin Q would take him to the Jiangshan Garden, student identification cards would not be accepted. He also asked Lu Fan what he was going to do when he saw the villa that the municipal government had gifted to the top student of the southern province. While Kin Q was holding the magic staff with one hand, she clenched her other fist, closed her eyes, and with a shout asked her father to stop bothering Lu Fan. While Han Ki had her hands on her chest, she approached Lu Fan, turned her head towards Kin Q, and upon hearing about the villa, she couldn't help but be somewhat surprised. Lu Fan turned his head towards her and upon seeing her attitude, he couldn't help but be somewhat surprised, just like his aunt. Kin Q took Lu Fan's hand, and both of them left the bun shop. She turned her head towards Lu Fan and upon realizing that there was still time, she decided to quickly go see the person in charge of the educational institution first. Lu Fan simply started following her. While Shanhai and Han Ki were watching as they slowly moved away, he crossed his arms and she put her hands on her abdomen, and the two couldn't help but smile. Outside the city of Kingju, in the Dragon Realm, there was a forest. Someone went to this forest in an off-road vehicle, opened the door, got out of the car, and began walking around the area. This person was none other than Princess Jinju. While holding the magical staff in one hand, she turned her head to the side and asked her assistant what level the person they were looking for had. She hadn't come alone, she had come with her assistant Chui Hongtai. He began walking behind her, closed his eyes, and calmly explained that the person they were looking for was at level 19, while Jialong was already at level 14. Upon hearing this, she couldn't help but feel happy and smile. She slightly turned her head to the side and thought that the Dragon Master was truly different from the others. Several minutes later, they arrived at an open area in the forest. In front of them stood a giant dragon with four legs, a massive tail, and its body covered in tough scales. Standing next to this dragon was a man with white hair who held a spear. The princess and Chui Hongtai approached the man, and she asked him to defeat the level 30 boss as soon as possible. This man was Chen Tianjai, a level 19 dragon tamer. He was facing the level 30 boss who lived in this forest, which was a mix between a yeti and a giant monkey. The boss gained momentum, started advancing quickly towards Chen, and began to roar. Just before the boss could attack, Chen gained momentum, took a big leap, and ordered his dragon pet to use the sweeping ability. This allowed the dragon to swing its giant tail and damage targets within its fan-shaped area. The dragon struck the boss forcefully with its tail, causing its body to be thrown backwards. With a penetrating gaze, Chen tightly grasped the spear and began aiming it at the boss. This spear was the dragon spear, which allowed him to mobilize the Kai of the dragon and unleash a powerful attack. He struck the boss forcefully with the spear, piercing its chest in the process. In the blink of an eye, it lost its life and fell to the ground. Several seconds later, Chen landed on the floor. While holding onto the spear with one hand, he extended his other hand towards the princess, and simply began staring into her eyes. His dragon was actually an Ankylosaurus. Now that they had defeated the boss, its level rose to 15 and Chen's level rose to 20. Chen approached them. Princess Jinju started looking at him and couldn't help but applaud and feel happy. She thought he hadn't wasted the dragon egg she had given him. She also added that she would only be disappointed with him if he behaves like a waste, just like Chui Hongtai. Chen placed his hand on his chest, slightly bowed his head to her, and explained that not disappointing her was more than enough for him. Chui Hongtai, who was standing behind her, simply clenched his fists, closed his eyes, and remained silent. The princess put her hands on her waist, slightly turned her head back, started looking at Chui Hongtai with a serious gaze and told him that his dragon spear now belonged to Chen. 
She asked Chui Hongtai if he had any objections. Chui Hongtai, who had his eyes closed, responded to her that the spear was at the princess's disposal, and she could do as she pleased. Chen approached her, placed his hand on his chest, started looking into her eyes, and couldn't help but thank her. With the Ankylosaurus, the dragon spear, and along with the princess's magical enhancement, he was sure he would be able to defeat the champion from the south. Princess Jinju opened her eyes, started looking at Chen, and couldn't help but feel happy and proud of him. She knew that Chen Tianjai had come in second place in the grand exam with 210,000 points. Although the score for first place, Lu Fan, hadn't been announced yet, it was estimated that he could have 300,000 points, so there was still hope for Chen. When she remembered Lu Fan's name, she couldn't help but feel furious. She clenched her teeth tightly and gave Chen an aggressive look as she told him to always remember Lu Fan's name. She ordered him to kill Lu Fan and take possession of his black dragon. She placed a hand on her waist, began pointing at Chen with her other finger, and with a serious look she explained to him that she was going to help him become the most powerful dragon master in history, in the country of Tai Kai. He was going to be her servant, above all others, so she asked him not to disappoint her regarding Lu Fan. Chen simply placed his hand on his chest and slightly bowed his head before her. Several seconds later, he lifted his head, started staring into the princess's eyes and asked her not to worry because for him this was an honor. He was willing to be her knight forever. Upon hearing this, she began turning her body to one side, started looking at Chen and couldn't help but praise him for being a very prudent person. To her, he was much more prudent than Lu Fan, whom she had given the opportunity to achieve success in just one step, but he didn't appreciate it. She took the magical staff again, turned her back to Chen, and as she was walking away from him, she gave Chui Hongtai the order to go to the city of Zhanghai and find out which educational institution Lu Hui was studying at. Chui Hongtai slightly turned his body to one side and upon hearing her command, closed his eyes and responded with a understood. She also added that if he couldn't do this well, then he could leave. Upon hearing this, Chui Hongtai, who had his eyes closed, became somewhat nervous and couldn't help but sweat. He lowered his head before her and responded with another understood. Princess Jinju began to look forward with a hateful gaze and thought that soon Lu Fan would forever regret everything he had done to her. This is the end of the video, if you guys want to see the next part, then don't forget to subscribe and like the video.